Greetings, 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 my fellow quantum siders. Today's a beautiful day today, so what better to do in a beautiful day than take full advantage of it from the rooftop. And be mindful of your beautiful environment. Today's topic, success and the science behind it. Success is one of the most elusive characteristics or traits that's known to man and everybody wants to be. Everybody who I know wants to be successful. No one wants to be a loser. So what's the science behind success? People say, um, Time Magazine, Forbes, say the 1%, 1% out of 100. So what about the other 99% of the people in the world? I mean, is success out of reach? Is success something that is so hard to obtain only 1% of the world can get it? Does 1% of the world only deserve to be successful? So what I did is, because I fall in that 99%, but I'm still trying. And that's um, what I found to be the number one trait of successful people. So I'll be going over some science behind being successful. Number one, there's no scientific evidence to support success. There's no gene or predisposition to success, but a notable commonality among successful people is the ability to continue trying even in the face of failure. Science shows that intelligence has up to 40% to do with our success and personality has 10 to 15% to do with it as well. Research shows that successful people set goals. Goals are scientifically proven to increase performance. Limit yourself to three goals or less. Focus is power. Choose the tax that has the biggest effect and do it first. I'm going to stop right there. Success, you can't be born with a gene that says, you know what, I could drop him off in the middle of nowhere and he's going to make it. He's going to be successful. Something that you have to be brought up is something that you have to um, have in your structure. Like, for example, if someone uh, is born into a rich family, they're going to be have all the things, all the proper tools at hand to be successful. So they're going to pick up some things. But if they weren't, if a successful child was born and they were dropped off to a, a poor family, the chances of that child being poor are very high. Because success isn't something that is in your blood. I don't know if I agree completely with that, but science says there's no gene behind success. It's something, it's something that you have to acquire. 40% um, of success has to do with intelligence. I know a lot of intelligent people. They, they, they graduate from school, they get a degree, can't find a job. So, what's the trade-off? A person's personality has 10 to 15% to do with success. A lot of the people I know have awesome personalities who are successful. They're people you tend to gravitate to because you just want to be around them because their energy is so good. They're, they're always positive, very optimistic, very 
seldom do you see them negative, in a negative spirit, in a negative vibe. They're very intelligent also. But if I had to do a, a trade or a trade-off, I think I would be have a nice personality. You could always uh, make yourself intelligent. You can always study. Uh, you, you, you know, you can always learn more. But a person's personality has to come from within. Your intelligence can come from without. You know, you have. You know, you can be born a dummy. Be dedicated to your studies and learn how to be smart. Person's personality, you have to bring it, you, you have to want to be better. You have to want to uh, um, be a likable person. You have to want to be uh, optimistic. Research shows that successful people set goals. This is one thing that I need to start doing. I need to start setting more goals. Well, not maybe more goals, but I need to set the right goals. For example, um, I have a goal to be a speaker, a public speaker. I need to set a goal like by the end of this month, I'm going to look for and find one speaking event. That's not a whole, you know, that's not too far fetched. I can see myself doing it. I need to st start getting. motivated and how I'm going to do it. Set a goal. Write it down. Remind yourself. When you wake up in the morning, I have a goal. I need to be working towards it daily. And don't have a bunch of goals. Like, I got a top 20 goal list. All you need is three things. Three things to focus on. When you knock those three things out, make three more and so on and so on and so on. But I find that people who try to multitask doesn't really come up like they planned it. You know? As the old saying goes, uh, the jack of all trades is the master of none. In the world we live in, all you need is one good thing. All you need is one thing to focus on. All you need is one thing to make it. And that's after you get that one thing, then you can focus on something else. But get that one thing out the way first. Number two, make promises. Number three, challenge yourself. I like to make promises, um, very few promises, but I like to make the right promises because promises kind of back me in the corner and make me do things. Like if I promise you, bruh, you can count on me, I'm gonna do it. Trust and believe you can count on me. That does something to my internal system that says, you know what, work, prove yourself. So not only is it for me, oh, not only is it for somebody else, but, but it does something to me emotionally that makes me step up. Challenge yourself. Number three, science shows when people set reachable goals, they step up with extra effort. They call it reach goals. So if I like have a goal for the gym, I wanna lift 300 pounds. 300 pounds by the end of the month. I'm already at, let's say, 250. That's a goal where I can reach for. If someone put 300 pounds on the bar right now, I couldn't do it. But I'm at 250. I'm not too far behind. But I have to put in the work in order for me to achieve it. I know if I put in the work, I can do it. That's a reach goal. Now, if I set a goal like 400 pounds, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna end up injuring myself. Set a goal where you can see yourself reaching, okay, if you put in the work. 
successful people learn to adapt. If you can't learn to adapt and you want to be successful in life, you might as well hang it up. I was in a class not too long ago and the teacher did um, a small exercise. He made us change seats. Some people got up, no problem, change seats. Some other people stayed where they, they were, crossed their arms and, and sort of cried like a baby. These are the people who, who, who are in their comfort zone and afraid to adapt in some new environment. Look at it like this. If you can't make it where you are, if you're having trouble finding success where you are, you need to think outside the box. You need to move out of your comfort zone and adapt to a new one because success is not where you're at. So you need to go look for it. You can't grow being comfortable. The process of growth makes you uncomfortable. Take it all the way back to a baby. When a baby is growing teeth, I believe it's called teething. They're always crying. They want to chew on stuff. They very agitated they're annoyed with everything that's a growing pain okay the faster you can adapt to a situation the faster you can grow and growth is the quantum side of things growth is what this is all about growth is what success is all about okay it's highly unlikely that a successful purpose person ever says I can't a successful person will um, accept the challenge they will register it in their mind and their mind has the job of finding a way because they're optimistic and that brings us into the next one successful people persevere Although there's no scientific evidence to support a successful gene, it is noticeable that successful people have the ability to continue trying in the face of failure. The road to success if is paved with failure. The Bible says, uh, the righteous man falls seven times and gets up seven times a lot of us get annoyed and off track with one failure you know we got we got something that we put our hearts into someone says no I don't think it's a good idea or someone says um, are you stupid are you crazy it'll never work and we take it to heart. Someone tells me something will never work. That, that just lets me know that no one has ever done it. And I'm going to be the first. That puts my success factor up to here when I make it work. Because everybody's now, everybody's in awe. Because you know what? I didn't accept no for an answer. I persevered. I kept going. And I found a way to crack the code. Successful people know how to handle negative emotions that come along with failure and success. I'll give you an example. Um, first, I'll just say successful people know how to handle the emotions that come along with negative behavior. Someone to, to tells you no or, or you you know, you're practicing or you're studying and you fail the test. Your pride is shot. Your whole game plan is off now. You fall into a slump. You got to get out of it. You got to get out the slump, get back to the grind, get back to the drawing board. 
because guess what? It's not a mistake if you get back at it. It's only a mistake if you fail and you don't get back up. But when you get back up, it's now an experience. Now you have insight. Now you have a different perspective. Get back at it. Persevere. Resilience is the number one trait to a successful person, okay? In their heart, they know that they're a winner. Now, they're just trying to prove it to the world and themselves. Be that person. Successful people focus, focus. They know how to get in the zone or the flow. Science says we can't, science says we can only focus on one thing. We can't focus on two things at a time. So stop trying to, okay? Be dedicated to a single task. Don't worry about nothing else. Once you conquer that task, move on to the next. That's how you start knocking down the blocks. You can only take one step at a time. A lot of people like to multitask. I believe in the saying, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. I want to be a master of, of something. And check this out. If I dedicate a certain amount of time to mastering one thing, after I master that, I can move on to something else. But the idea of, of, of me focusing on a bunch of stuff, nah, that's all right. Successful people are optimistic. You can't tell an optimistic person he can't do something, or you can't tell an optimistic person to try to see the bad in, in, in things. Uh, you know, I don't like quoting the Bible a lot, but the, the Bible says, look for good in everything. If things are, are of good report, if things have value, if things have power, think on these things, period. Have it in your mind, if you're going through bad times, that good times are right around the corner. And let that be your mindset. Let that be your state of mind in everything. And I guarantee you, you'll find it. And the more you find it, the more it'll happen to you. But guess what? The more you think negative, the more negative will, will happen to you. I don't know who, who uh, made this up, but I heard it not too long ago. It said, the man who says he can't, and the man who says he can are both right. I want to be the, the, the man who says I can. So practice gratitude. Gratitude opens you up for, to appreciate the smallest things in life. Gratitude opens you up so, 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 so that somebody could give you a cup of water and you really would like a nice soda or something but gratitude says well you know what i'm not thirsty no more <laughs> gratitude helps you props uh solve problems the science it says practice gratitude people who practice gratitude are happier when you are happier it's easier to feel optimistic which will make you more confident and a better a better problem solver. Optimist people are better problem solvers. When you go on a job interview and, and, and people ask you, uh, tell me something that you did that, 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 tell me something you did at your last, last job that solved a problem. It's a common, it's a, a question that they ask on damn near every interview. Tell me how you solve the problem. Your answer to that question lets people know how optimistic you are. Are you able to place yourself in a situation where you can see the good 
in the worst situation. Everybody wants to be around that person. So, in summary, success isn't in the blood. Success is in your heart. Success is in your mind. Success is in your daily activity. Success is something that you have to keep at. It won't happen overnight. Success is something that you have to persevere. Success is in resilience. Success is in the ability to get knocked down over and 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 over again and get up. All you need is one to crack the code. You don't need a bunch of them. You don't need a lot of things to study on. All you need is one thing to focus on in life. And once you get that one thing, find something else. It's the quantum side. And it's the vortex. And we're on the rooftop. Learn to be mindful of your beautiful environment. Appreciate the small things in life. And guess what? The big things will come out of nowhere. Have you ever heard the saying, once the student is ready, the master will appear.